Hello guys, Lady Lee here from Lady Lee's Home and um, in this video I want to share with you a really, really, really exciting thing um, for me. If you've been following me for a while, you know that this here, what you're looking at is my farmland and my dream was always to create a vegetable farm over here. It's right on a main road which is why I bought this property back in 2013. The kids were really young until now and it just was too much, um, but it is time to go. So this is the opening of a section number two. This section is going to be planted with onions, four beds of onions and four beds of garlic. Um, here in the south, both garlic and onions can be planted in the fall and it is um, time to get to work. So I'll share with you the process, the whole process of how we planted garlic this year. This is the third year that we are growing about 1600 heads of garlic and um, in the previous years I did it at my friend's farm which is right down the road she has a flower farm and I just took over um, three or four beds and did garlic and sweet potatoes and stuff like that because I was not ready to work my own land not, um, yet but it is time this is um, a section Again, the second section, you can see down the field, the first section I started working earlier this year. Um, this section was covered with tealed first. Um, a friend tealed it for me, and then it was covered with silage tarp for a few months. So um, we are now at the end of October, and it was covered probably since um, late spring, I think. So it's been under tarp for a long while and the tarp is just kind of collecting all the heat and the uh, weeds germinate under it and then it burns all of them and it keeps the ground moist and you know uh, microorganisms love it. Um, the tarp takes a few months, uh, sometimes if you're even like in colder areas it might take a year or so for it to do the, the, the job that it's supposed to be doing. Here in the south, six months or so is enough for us to have the tarp on, but it is just helping the soil so much in creating that beautiful, healthy, healthy soil. Obviously, there's still a lot of improvement here for the soil, um, but the silage sharp is a good start. So once I removed the salad sharp from the, the section, I used the tractor. I'm using a Fermol Super A. And um, in the center between the wheels, I have two plates that I think they're called bedders or something like that. They basically create beds, create rows. And I wanted to kind of pile the soil just a little bit not too much but i do have um, clay soil here it's very compacted so we needed to pile it up a little bit to create a, a good bed of loose soil this is all fast forward i do not really drive the tractor that fast i'm actually a pretty slow person but i like to have it precise i tried to match it with the first section so the beds are line up um nicely and um yeah that's i just i just the first bed is the most important one and then you just put the wheels of the tractor in the um right next to the first bed in the kind of like the groove that the the tractor made and then um just keep going back and forth again i did not lower the bedders all the way i didn't want to make a really tall row just to kind of pile it up a little bit and then use the tractor to help me mark um, where the beds are. Once I had the beds uh, marked and the soil moved with the tractor, then the hard physical work started. This was a few days of a lot of raking, a lot of hoeing, a lot of moving soil around. Um, 
a lot of just measuring and uh, moving things moving the soil it's a lot on on your body so it was a hard difficult week a lot of rocks to remove a lot of clumps um, some uh, grass that didn't completely broke down under the tarp so that needs to be removed too these beds are permanent beds so even though i started them with the tractor they're not the tractor is no longer going to work this section so i'm basically using the tractor to help me kind of pile the soil a little bit and mark where the beds are but then um since i like everything precise and measured correctly and uniform then I, it's just a lot of work by hand to move the soil and prepare those beds. These beds are 50 feet uh, long and about 30 inches wide. A little less than 30 inches, but about 30 inches wide and 50 feet long. And um, it was important to me to make them kind of... Um, uh you know how most market gardens are because most of the tools that are um, designed for small market gardens are for beds that are 30 inches wide so um, i did my best to measure and place the strings and have everything kind of exact um, it makes really work and be bed prep and all of that much easier later obviously we had a ton ton of rocks here um, and you can see that the beds are not too high but they are a little raised off the ground and then the walkway between each bed is about 16 inches wide or so now to landscape fabric um, or weed cover, I think it's called landscape fabric, weed cover, uh, weed barrier, it's got different names. I'm getting mine from Berry Hill Irrigation in Virginia. Uh, they're not too far from us. It's an amazing store with very knowledgeable people and um, they can ship too. So if you're somewhere else, um, uh, they're really great they'll help you design irrigation systems and all of that and they have all the farm tools that um, or equipment equipment and tools and supplies that that um, a farmer will need um, so I get my weed barrier from them this one is a three inch uh, a three foot I'm sorry a three foot by 300 roll and uh, what I want to do here is basically cover my walkways with the weed barrier so I do not have any weeding to do on my walkways at all. And then I will also show you how I dig or how I burn holes in this fabric to, um, to plant my uh, onions and garlic and onions and garlic don't have very large tops so they don't cover the ground and then there's a lot of sea a lot of weeds between the plants and it takes forever to keep it clean and it's just much easier to prepare the landscape or the weed cover um, with holes in it and then eliminate weeding for the whole season so we'll get to that in a minute right now what you're seeing me do here is um, folding the weed barrier in half because uh, my walkways are about 16 inches and this is three three feet so um, I think if we divide three feet in half that's about 18 inches um, let's see 12 12 and 12 15 yeah I think 18 inches um, and that will be just perfect for the walkways um, I wanted to get as much as I could from this roll so I just folded it in half and then I take the um, torch and use that plywood that we made a grid for the holes you'll see me using it in a minute and I just kind of go uh, on the seam and burn it and that will divide that uh, three foot piece in half you a few 
uh, tips here when using a torch you need to get the one that can keep burning when you turn it upside down i will put a link to it in the description of the video and it's something that will make it so much easier for you to do if you get the cheap ones from lowe's or whatever every time you turn the thing down it will turn off and it's a pain in the butt so get the good one even though it's a little bit of an investment and that will make work much easier every once in a while i kind of stopped and made sure to separate the um the landscape um the barrier the weed barrier because it is plastic so it will kind of um glue to each other uh, and then I had my pieces for the walkways. I had, I needed seven of those. So I, once I had those, I moved on to burning the holes. And this piece is just going to be on the bed. And in every hole, I'm going to plant a garlic clove. This will help me eliminate weeds between the plants. This is a grid of 6 inches per plant. Garlic can be planted, if you have really good soil, it can be planted even uh, closer spaces like 4 inches between each clove or whatever. But this is the first time that I am planting in that section. The soil there is not horrible and garlic is not very spoiled, so that's a good thing. It doesn't even also need a lot of watering because I still don't even have a well over there at the farm. But um, waiting on that to be installed. But garlic with the amount of rain that we have here, here in North Carolina doesn't even need to be watered usually. Um, and we plant it in the fall in the middle to the end of October and then we will harvest late somewhere around june somewhere in june we will harvest it so anyway we're using this um um plywood that um kelly made the greed in because she uses that for flowers too um and then you just place it on the landscape barrier and um, use the torch to burn the holes you can use those green lines on the um on the fabric to uh, make sure everything is straight okay so here we are with the landscape uh, the weed barrier on the um, walkways and the next step it's held down with uh, landscape staples next step was to add some uh, organic fertilizer i'm using an organic fertilizer that is called harmony i get it locally but i'm sure you can get it online too um and then on top of that goes compost i needed double the amount of this compost here but i just did not have enough so i did the best i could uh, again garlic is not very spoiled when it comes to soil so it will be just fine in these beds spreading it around that was next again removing more rocks and more rocks and more rocks and then the uh, weed barrier with the holes goes on top of each bed and you can see how it covers the bed so basically this whole section they're still going to be especially in the beginning when the plants are little there's still going to be some weeds coming out from around the clothes in the hole but it makes it super easy to weed them really quick and you don't need to spend any time on weeding the walkways and this landscape or this weed barrier if you treat it right will last for years the one that i have in i did the same thing in the garden in my house and i am going on year number four using the same landscape barrier or weed cover and i do not did not need to replace even one piece yet so it should last for years if you just treat it right okay so next was digging holes for the garlic cloves and i'm just using a piece a little stick uh, benny carved a pointy um, tip for it for me so it was easy to stick in the ground i'm making holes that are about maybe two inches deep or something like that 
And then the girls uh, took the garlic cloves and you need to make sure you put the tip pointing up and the butt of the garlic clove, uh, clove going down into the soil. Press it down a little bit and, um, and that's it. Cover it with a little bit of soil. I am planting a variety of hardneck garlic that is called music in two beds that's about 750 something plants and then the other two beds will be planted with a variety that is called transylvania and um and then you just cover the the cloves a little bit and that's it you're good to go i hope this was helpful um i will post some helpful links on growing garlic in the description of the video below thank you for watching and i'll keep you updated on what will happen here with the garlic and the onions as the season progresses